We're live. We're live, A listers. I was just going through my warm ups here, you guys, and you caught me. I think Instagram caught like the last few seconds. Facebook, maybe, maybe the last second. Um, always get yourself activated and warmed up before you perform an athletic event, which every speech and every presentation is an athletic event, if you think about it. It's a performance, it's like a ballet, it's like putting on a, a, a show in the theater. Um, so always get yourself activated, no different than if you were Olympic champion, okay? A-listers, reminder of who you are, right? Reminder of why we're here, who's here, right? The book, uh, my book, uh, there's no plan B for your A game. There's no plan B for your A game. That's the reason all of you are here. It's the reason people joined the A-listers group because you all are committed to your A game and loyal to it. And your A game is your dream, right? The only reason your A game or your dream, think about this, doesn't work out. The only reason that your, your dream, that one, yeah, that one you don't want to talk about, that dream doesn't come true is because you have options for them not to come true, okay? In my life, the dreams that I've, I've declared and the dreams that I followed and the dreams that I allowed to come true, the only reason they came true wasn't because I'm dedicated. It wasn't because I'm disciplined. It wasn't because I'm uh, talented in any way other than I'm loyal to my dream and I don't have any options to that loyalty, just like a marriage. You know, you're loyal to the marriage and you have no other options other than that loyalty, right? That's what constitutes a great marriage. That would, that's what constitutes making your dreams come true. Too many options, no dreams can come true. That's the title of the book. That's the reason that you and me are together. That's the reason we're here. That's the only reason we're here because we love and are dedicated and more importantly, loyal to our dreams, to our A game. There's no plan B, okay? So cool. Okay, guys, big day. I got like five pages of notes. I've never had five pages of notes in my life, including when I went to college. Um, and here I am with five pages of notes in front of me because we got a big, big day. The title of today is Why Your Story Has to Be Personal. It's why your story has to be personal. Remember? Remember what we talked about last week? We talked about the temperature of our environment, the temperature of the culture. And that temperature is pretty darn hot, right? It's pretty darn high, right? Um, sometimes you enter a cold room. Sometimes you enter a cold life, right? And that's a different temperature. That temperature is down. But for the most part, um, especially here in the U.S., our, we're, we're like at a, you know, over a hundred degrees. Like we're cranking over here. We're like fighting. We're treating each other like enemies and stuff, right? So we wanted to learn last week how to take that temperature and take it to where you want to take it. And we discovered last week that the best way to get the temperature where you need it as the presenter, as the leader, is to tell a story to share yourself. Now, that story that you're going to tell to get people on your side, that cannot just be some stupid story that's not personal to you. It's got to be personal to you, that story. The more personal, the more universal. The more personal the story you tell, the more effect you have on your audience. So I want you to think about it like this. If you, when you enter a stage, when you enter a live, when you enter a Zoom, when you enter a phone call, maybe a conference call, when you enter a room, people don't trust you. People don't necessarily like you, right? They don't know you. So human beings put their armor on, they put their guard up, and they look to see if there's a way for them to trust you. If you start with a story and the story, like I said, must be personal, then the trust starts to build minute by minute, second by second as you share yourself so that trust 
can be in the room. So we, you and me can bring trust back to this world. Okay. So wait, so before we jump into it any deeper, before we go any deeper, I just want to remind you guys of one thing. I want you to mark your calendars, right? Mark your calendars right now. Uh, for next week, March 9th, guess who's going to be here March 9th, next Tuesday with me, Jean-Louis Rodrigue, my movement coach, the greatest movement coach in the world, the guy who who trains um, big, big movie stars like Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire and this gal, Margot Robbie, who won the Academy Award for I, Tonya. Amazing, amazing um, examples of physical actors. He is a physical coach. He's going to be here next week. Write that down because this physicality piece I want you to know right away, you know, because I've, I've had Jean-Louis on here before. Some of you may have missed him. Some of you asked a lot of questions about this whole physical part of people trusting because pe the body can't lie, right? So if your body is, is true to your message and it's true to your dreams, people trust that. And that's what we're really going to build here. So um, I, I can't wait for Jean-Louis next week. And um, and then I, I also mentioned last week, I teased you a little bit. And I mentioned that I was planning something special. Uh, and I, I, you know, obviously I don't have to tell you guys how important story is for me, right? Um, I know story. And by now, you know story is the fastest and quickest way to get more clients and to scale and build your business, right? That's what we know. We know that to be true. And so that's why I've been doing these lives because I want to teach you guys that because I want you to be the best in the world at what you do. Well, you have to have your story and you have to physicalize your story to achieve that, right? So, and I love doing these lives, right? But I told Don, I said, sweetheart, um, look, I'm an athlete, right? Um, so I want to train like one. I like training camp. I'm used to going to a training camp. And back when I played the NFL, they had what we called five day mini camps. So we'd go in for five days. We'd get our mind right. We'd get, we'd put in the techniques that we needed for the following season. And these mini camps were really key to the success of our season, the upcoming season. And I said, sweetheart, I want to get these people, my A-listers, on lives. I want to put them five days in a row, you know, like we'll, you know, train for an hour, hour, maybe hour plus uh, each day for five days straight so we can really get into who they are. Can we do that? She goes, done. I got it. I know what we're going to do. We're going to challenge them. We're going to create a challenge. That's what she said. I said, okay, cool. What's that? What's that even mean? And she goes, no, we're going to put, we're going to put a, hey, <laughs> there's my we're little, gonna, we're gonna, we're my gonna training, my training camp builder. And here is the name of the challenge of this mini camp that we're going to put together, right? It's called choose your story, scale your business challenge. Choose your story scale your business. That's exactly what we're going to do because the word choose, choose your story. The word choose is a big word for me. The word decide, like decide on your story. Decide what story you're going to tell. And the results of that is your business gets scaled and it really explodes from our experience. Um, so we're going to do that for five straight days and we're going to start on March 15th. Choose your story and explode your business. Okay, that's the challenge. Um, so you guys can go to boeason.com forward slash challenge and save your spot right now. Okay, we'll also put that in the chat. So it's boeason.com forward slash challenge. Five days of us choosing, deciding on what your story is, scale your business and explode this thing like we've done and like all most of our customers have done. Okay. All right. You guys cool with that? So everyone's got it. Boeson.com forward slash challenge. That's where you get, sign up for the challenge that begins on March 15th, March 15th through the 19th. Okay. Five days, mini camp challenge. Cool. Okay. All right. Let's get back. 
Let's get back into personal story, okay? Um, you know, um, when you, you hear people all the time say this word vulnerability, right? And I think they use it kind of wrong. It's kind of misleading. They'll say, you know, Bo, be vulnerable or Don, be vulnerable. That's what's really attractive. And that's true. They're right about that. But most people believe that vulnerability means crying. And that is not what I mean by vulnerability, right? Um, the most attractive thing about you, um, and I know most of us don't know this because we're not taught this, is that vulnerability? Is that that you've lost games before? Is that you got cut from a team before? It's that you got dumped at the prom. Those things are attractive to people. Guess why they're attractive to people? They're attractive to human beings because every human being has got dumped. Every human being has got rejected. No one really cares about your successes. They care about how you got to those successes. And often, how you get to successes is how? Yeah, by losing, by getting rejected, by getting punched in the face, by trying to climb the mountain and you just can't succeed. That's what's attractive. So that's what. I mean by vulner vulnerability in your story. Um, let me give you a couple examples of this, of clients that I have who have told these stories because often I'll say, okay, everybody, in fact, I'll, I'll give you the exercise right now. Here's the exercise. Meanwhile, we're talking, you guys, about the most powerful thing you've got, which is your personal story. The more personal it is, the more exposed you are the more people trust you and the more impact you now have in their lives, okay? That's how this thing is all set up. That's why story has been around since human beings have been around. That's why story is effective. But most people don't want to share anything personal about themselves because it reveals aspects of themselves that they don't want anybody to see or know about. Like the time they got dumped at the prom, right? They don't want people to know that. But if they had the bravery to tell that story, they would realize they have a huge impact with their audience because most of their audience has been rejected in the same exact way, which puts you on the same, on the same page. And now you have connective tissue. And that's all human beings are looking for, especially in this environment. So let me jump to a couple of simple examples. Um, one gal who's a client of mine, her name's Ashley. Amazing, amazing, successful gal. In fact, Inc. Magazine just named her uh, one of the fastest growing, I think it was like the top 20 or whatever, fastest growing companies in the United States. So she's like really, really successful gal, right? She, her story is about her um, being a, a, like she grew up in, in uh, North Dakota and, and no, and I think it's South Dakota and she was a, a rodeo gal, right? So she was up for this rodeo queen uh, thing, right? And in the middle of going through this, you know, Miss Rodeo uh, pageantry, she got cancer and she went through chemo and lost all of her hair. So imagine this, this beauty queen, you know, now has lost all of her hair. Um, and that was the story of how she had to buy these three different wigs to wear during this year when she had to travel around and tour being this rodeo queen. And the story was so revealing. And so it was like a story that you never really get to hear. You know, we hear the story about somebody being a beauty queen, but we don't hear the part about them losing all their hair. And, you know, people, she was reluctant to tell that story, but the minute she surrendered to that being the most powerful thing that she's got, which is that which reveals intimate things about her that she didn't want to necessarily tell people, as soon as she did that, you watched her company explode bigger and bigger and bigger because that's the story she led with because she's the speaker. She's the figurehead of her company, just like you are to your company, right? 
we're all public speakers for our company, right? If you're a small business owner, if you're a financial advisor, you're really, you're really the face, you're the voice, you're, you're, you're the goods. So you've got to be able to share yourself and tell your story, which now brings the trust down and brings people to you. That's what we want. Um, another example, another gal. It's notice why I'm using two gals as examples. I have a lot of guy clients, right, too, a lot of men clients, too, right? Men are a little bit more, just so you know, especially in the financial services world, uh, men are a little bit more reluctant to share their story than most of the women that I work with, right? And I don't know if that's a gender thing or not. I'm not sure, but it's it's how I see it. It's 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 a true fact that 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 is revealed to me. Another gal, financial advisor, um, shared a story. Right, so she's talking to her clients. Think about this. She's speaking and doing a presentation to clients that, if they trust her and they like her, are are then going to hand over their life savings for her to manage. So they've got to trust her, correct? So she opens with a story, and the story is not a happy story. It's a story about when her dad left their family when she was eight years old. So she was woken up in the middle of the night, as the story goes, and it was by her, her dad saying, come out to the living room. I have something to say. And he announced that he's leaving the family. Well, my client, obviously being eight, little girl, um, is hanging onto her dad's leg and saying, dad, do not leave. Do not leave. Where are you going? Where could you be going? And he left, right? And she did not want to tell her potential clients that are about to hand over to her uh, their life savings because she thought, well, Bo, if I tell that story, my clients or would-be clients are going to think that I'm just been rejected by the man who's supposed to love me the most. And just he just left. And won't they want not to be around me if I tell that story? And I say, no, actually, the opposite is true. I think your company's going to explode if you begin to share this story because it's really hard to get a financial advisor to share that type of story. They usually want to talk about success, right? Or if they're men, they just don't want to share a story at all. They just want to talk about money, right? That's a mistake. So my client, this gal who her father left her at eight, started sharing that story. And I can't tell you, I wish I could release the numbers to you, um, but they are astronomical as far as the growth of her company because of that story unites her with her would-be customers. Because people, us human beings, connect to other human beings. That's that's the only reason, reason we're here and the dinosaurs aren't. It's the reason we're here and the saber-toothed tigers are extinct. We are pack animals. We love connection. That's how we've survived. So if you share this revealing personal story, people are going to trust you. They're going to follow you and they are going to help you build your business. My dream, and this is how Bo thinks, and this is how Dawn thinks, okay? And I want you to start opening your eyes the same way that we do. And that is, all I think about for you, my A-listers, all I think about for my kids, and all I think about for my kids' friends, and all I think about of any audience that I'm speaking to is this. How do these people, whether they're kids or adults, or they're married to them or not, how do they become the most valuable person in society today? The way the culture is currently designed, how do they, you in this case, become the most valuable person on the planet? That's how I look at the world. That's how I look at it for myself, my kids, my family, and everybody else related, all clients, including A-listers. Here's how you become the most valuable. You surrender to that story, that personal story. 
And as soon as you start to share that, now you become vulnerable. Your ass is now hanging out where I want it, right? Because only then do people reward you because courage is always rewarded. The two girls that, the two gals that I just talked about, those two clients, they have this sense of bravery and they have this sense of survival and courage, both of them. You know, one through cancer, one through the dad leaving them. That makes them, audiences pay attention to them, follow them, and build their company for them. Now, and if I can get more men to do that too, they will see the same results, which I, I have a lot of men, but I, I, just want, I just want to point out to the guys on here, look, the reason that I've, I've, you know, reached these world-class levels at, in different occupations is because I, I'm, I'm just, I've got a little enough courage in my body to muster up the bravery to share myself. And that's warts and all, like my failures, like me being cut, like me being dumped, like me being rejected, right? The failures that I'm able to uh, share connect me with other men and connect me with women. It connects me with human beings. That's what makes you the most valuable. So I want you to surrender um, to that, you guys. Um, now, it, it's, it's, it's a scary thing. I'm not saying this is the easiest thing in the world to share yourself. But it's, it's one of the simplest, right? And it, you know, our world is, you know, we live in a competitive world, right? And there's many speakers out there. There's many people that own, you know, businesses like you do. Uh, there's many people that want to be speakers. There's many people that want to be coaches, right? But if those people who are competing with you for those, those roles in the world, if they're not willing to tell and share their own personal story, you are going to pass them so damn quick. It's the secret weapon to scaling your business and making it grow fast. That's the reason Dawn and I were able to grow this company, you know, entering this, this, you know, this world that we had no experience in. We didn't know a bunch about it, but we did know our story. And once we knew our story, it started to connect to audiences, which has built us over the last 10 years. Same is true for you. And if no one is going to do this, if no one's going to really have the courage and the bravery to do this, then we're going to pass them up, right? Okay, so I, I want you to be the most valuable man or woman on the planet, given the cer certain circumstances that we're facing right now in our, in our world, right? The rewards are going to the are going to go to the storyteller, to the one brave enough to share not the story of their victory, the story of what got them to that victory, which is usually, you know, uh, losing your hair or losing your dad or getting popped in the face or getting rejected. That's usually the story that makes people great. That's the story that connects you to the rest of the world. Most people just don't know it. And if they do know it, they don't have the courage to tell it because they don't want to look like a loser. Well, everybody has lost, right? Show me somebody who's never lost. I'll show you somebody who's never played. Okay. That's us. So, you got to surrender to your courage, to your bravery. It's the only thing that's rewarded in this in, in our lifetime. Okay, um, let's start to open this up to you. Let's start to open up uh, some question and answers. I'll answer as many questions as I can um, right now. And Dawn's got some questions, and and. We'll talk more about this and we'll get deeper into this. And I'll just remind you of the challenge coming up, right? Like, so I'll have Jean-Louis on March 9th. Jean-Louis next Tuesday, a week from today. We want to know the physicality. We want to know what makes people trust us. They trust our story and the physicality 
of the story. That's where we're going to bring Jean Louis. He'll answer all the questions you have. Then on the 15th of March, right? 15th through 19th, the challenge. So that's the one where we're gonna we're gonna have you. We're gonna we're gonna demand that you choose that story, the correct story that then scales your business and explodes it. Because you guys, it doesn't take a lot of stories. It takes one. Because I've been doing this for ten years, and I literally tell two stories. At first, I just told one for many many years. Then we've discovered this other one that just kind of revealed itself to me. And they're both similar stories in that they talk about, you know, rejection. They talk about getting my butt kicked and still staying the course. That's an heroic story. Okay. That's what we're going to find for you so that we can scale your business, make you the most powerful man or woman on the planet today. That's how I see you. That's how I'm going to talk to you. That's how I see everybody that I interact with. But now we're going to take this little mini camp, this challenge for five days and do it five days in a row so we can really build some momentum and take you right to the top. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's open it up for a QA, and a babe. Yep. Okay. So um, Naomi asks, how do you know which is the best story to tell? We all have so many stories. Oh, we're going to find that out in the challenge that look, okay. I'll give you a quick little, a quick little, uh, five second exercise that I want all of you to do right now in the next five seconds. Think of your proudest moment of your life. Think of your greatest moment of your life. Five seconds. Go. Okay. Everybody got it. Greatest success of your life proudest moment of your life. What is it? You all know it, right? That's a bad story. Let's forget about that one. Let's throw it away. Now, I'm going to give you another five seconds. This time, here's the question. What was the lowest moment in your life? What was the moment that you looked around and there were no answers for you? You thought it was over for you. Five seconds, go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a good story. That, when you look around, and you may be young, you might be between the ages of 9 and 12, you looked around, there were no answers for you. You thought it was the end of your life. That's a great story. Guess why? You're still here. You're still here. That's a heroic story. Her heroism, courage, bravery, always rewarded. Remember, we don't care that you're at the top of Mount Everest. What we care about is how did you get there? What was the struggle? That's all we care about. That's what connects us as human beings, okay? That's where I want you to look for the best story, okay? And we'll talk about, we'll get deeper into this during the mini camp, during our challenge, uh, starting March 15th, okay? And we'll find and we'll have you choose, right, the right one. Scale your business. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Who else, babe? All right. We have a question okay. from Derek. Hey, Derek. And Derek says, Bo, do you ever plot out the different temperatures you want your audience to experience during the time that you're telling your story? Are there mm. certain transition techniques you use to constantly change the temperature? Yeah. I, 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 I want to get the temperature to where I want it initially, right? So people are coming from all different... Uh, yeah, somebody might have just come from a car accident and they walked in the room, right? Somebody could have just gotten engaged and they walked in the room. So those are two different temperatures that I'm dealing with, right? So I'm getting, by telling story, I'm getting everybody on the same page. Think, uh, Derek, think of a movie, a classic movie that everybody loves, like The Wizard of Oz or Rocky or Braveheart, something like that. What does the storyteller do right in the beginning of the movie? Because everybody walks into the movie theater, Derek, right? They're all coming from different backgrounds, different religions, different races. Everything's different about us, yet we all enter the theater and sit shoulder to shoulder with each other. How does the movie maker, in this case, get everybody on the same page? 
Well, if your hero is Sylvester Stallone or it's Denzel Washington or it's Tom Cruise, what do they usually do to that hero in the first few minutes of every single gosh darn movie? They put that person in jeopardy. They kidnap his children. They murder his or her, you know, significant other, wife, husband. They get them punched in the face and bleeding right off the get-go. Well, what does that do to all these different people that came into this theater? It puts them all at the same temperature. And that temperature is fighting for that guy or girl who just got punched in the face. They put you all in the same temperature. They're really good at this. I'm good at this. You're good at this too. You just, you're not aware that you're good at this. If you go to a birthday party and you're the leader of this birthday party, right? You're going to put everybody in the same temperature, even though they came from different neighborhoods and different places. And you do that by saying, ladies and gentlemen, the birthday boy is here. He's 12 years old and everybody starts singing, right? And now everybody's in the same boat. Us human beings are really, really naturally good at this. We just have to, you and me just have to be reminded because we don't know we're good at it. Um, a, a, another part of his question was something about it. I heard the word transition. Was that right? Yeah, are what? there certain transition techniques you use to consciously change the time? Uh, okay. So it, it that that transition piece I just discussed, right? So I get everybody on the same boat by talk, telling stories. So I walk out. I just did this last week in Atlanta. So I walk out on the stage in Atlanta, my first in-person speech in like, you know, a year or whatever. And I walk out on stage and the first thing out of my mouth, because they're all different, right? They came from different states. They, they're different, different levels of income. Um, um, the first thing out of my mouth, Derek, is I know I've got to get them all in the room. I know that I've got to get them at the same exact temperature. And here's how I do it. The first words out of my mouth were not this. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here in Atlanta. Wow. I feel the energy in the room. I love this group. I didn't say any stupid thing like that because that does not do anything. That doesn't move the dial one second. Here's the first thing out of my mouth. Story. Ladies, I don't say ladies and gentlemen, I don't say welcome, I don't say one thing, I say this. I have a daughter, her name is Eloise, she's 16. That was the first sentence out of my mouth. That's a half a sentence. I have a daughter, her name's Eloise, she's 16. Right then, a half a sentence into my 90 minute presentation, everybody in the room, is at the same temperature because now everybody in the room, because of the magic of story, because of the magic of personal story, if you notice, I wasn't talking about just a story. I was talking about my daughter. I have a daughter. Her name is Eloise. She's 16. Everybody in the audience is now comfortable. Their trust level now is building with me because I revealed something personal, personal about me. Now the audience members are in their own lives. You know what I mean by that? I said I had a daughter. Her name's Eloise. She's 16. They are now in their lives thinking about their daughters. Or if they don't have a daughter, they're thinking about, gosh, I wish I had a daughter. Now, the, those audience members from every state in the union, every socioeconomic background, every race, every doesn't matter. They're all in their own life, which is exactly where you want your audience in their own lives. Because when they see the first image of Rocky Balboa fighting, all they can think about is themselves, the fights that they've been in or never been in. They're in their own lives. That's why people love Rocky Balboa. 
That's why people uh, uh, like me as a speaker because I put them immediately, first sentence out of my mouth, I put them into their own lives. The greatest thing that one human being can give to another is to put them into their own lives. The only way to do that is to share something personal because personal equals universal. It puts them in their life, which is where every human being wants to be. Now, if you're the person who can put other people into their own life, which is where they desire to be, you get rewarded for that. Is it starting to make sense to everybody? During the challenge, it will all come together because we're going to have that mini camp for those five days. And we'll discover and we'll choose and decide what that is for you. Then watch what happens to your company. You may be just starting. You may already be successful. But everybody successful always wants to get better. So they start sharing their story and then get a bigger company, right? Those of you just starting, like a coaching business or a speaking business, if you start with your personal story and the correct one that we're going to teach you, you got the key to the kingdom. Your company is going to grow. It's going to accelerate really fast. And you're going to have a fun time, right? And you're going to be sharing yourself. And you're going to be rewarding, re being rewarded for sharing yourself. Okay? It's cool. Um, it's a cool way to build a business. It's the only way to build a business in my mind. All right, sweetheart, what else do we have? Yep. Uh, we have a good one here. Let me see. Um, I, from Jeremy. And he says, I'm a trainer specializing in high school athletes looking to earn oh. college scholarships. Oh, that's cool, Jeremy. Congratulations. I, I love that. Telling my story about my sports performance background or share more stories about kids and parents that I've helped. I, here's what I, where I'd look, Jeremy. Why, why are you great at that? Emotionally, there's something that happened, a story. And it probably happened in between the ages of nine and 12, but it could have happened at 22. It could have happened at, I don't know how old you are, but it could have happened in your 30s. I don't know. There was a defining moment. And we're going to talk about this in the challenge. There, there was a defining moment in your life, Jeremy, that made you world class at this thing. Emotionally, you were trying to prove something. You, you were, it was probably, it came from pain. It came from maybe you getting rejected from having a college scholarship. Um, that's where I would look if I was you. It's usually a pain point that is so devastating to you, especially when you're young, because everything hurts when you're young, right? It really hurts. Um, I'll give you an example, Jeremy. Most um, elite athletes, the ones that I've played with and played against, the, I mean, the greats, the truly, the Joe Montanas, the Warren Moons, the Earl Campbells, the Jerry Rice, the greatest players in the history of a game. Their story usually begins by them being cut from a team, them re being rejected by their high school or their college coach. There's something like that, Jeremy, in their life, which then drives them to prove everybody wrong. That's typically the story of elite, elite, elite performers, everybody. That's also the, the story of like, you know, if you look at uh, great singers of all time, like, you know, just look at them. They're usually rejected as performers at a young age. And then they go out and their quest is to prove that they belong. And they do belong. In fact, they go all the way to world class. That's a great story. It's a typical story, but it's a great story. Jeremy, I bet you, you had that in personally in your life, like maybe a sister or a family member, something, a cousin, uh, somebody you knew. I bet you were just trying to just fight. That's what makes great trainers, right? Fight for that player's greatness. That's what makes great coaches. The greatest coaches in the world see things that you can't see and no one else can see. 
They see greatness in their player or their coachee. They see greatness in them that no one else can see. They see greatness in them that they can't even see. And they point it out and they keep speaking it until they speak it long enough that the player actually lives into what you see in them. Something, that's where I'd be looking, Jeremy. I know you've got that in your past. If you don't, I'd be very surprised, okay? Um, look there, okay? Anything else, Ben? Um, yeah. Uh, Kari asks, uh, what if your lowest moment was in your mid-40s? Is that too late? I'm only four years beyond it. Hey, no, no, that's fine. It's fine. It's just that you, I typically look in between the ages of nine and 12, just because remember when you were that old, Kari, everything meant everything to you. So, you know, if you ask somebody to dance and they said, no, that was like the biggest thing in your whole, I could not have, you could not have faced more pain than that. Right. That's why I have you look there. But I've had friends that um, 40 seems to be a, a line of demarcation, a line where you're about 40 and something boom, twists, pain, a pain point, a, a rebirth, if you will. A lot of great stories come at that 40-year-old mark. They also come at that 21, 22-year-old mark. They seem to come there too. Um, first I look between nine and 12. If I don't find one there, that's when I go, you know, to 21, just look there. Then I look at the forties, but the biggest pain point, I don't care what age it is, right? If it's a big pain point, there's a great story there. And a, not only a great story, but an effective story. You understand? So look there, uh, Kari, I think you might be right. I think you might be right. I think 40 might be the place, this rebirth. That's the story, the rebirth. How many other 40-year-olds feel that rebirth? Those are the people you're going to have an effect on when you tell that story. And that's how you're going to build this business. Look there, Kari, okay? Okay, good. Um, okay, let's get to the marching orders. And here they are, right? Mark your calendars. I told you this before, March 9th. That's next Tuesday. Jean-Louis Rodrigue is going to be here live in front of you guys. He'll answer all your questions. I would never put anybody in front of you guys who is not the best in the world at what they do. This guy, the reason Leonardo DiCaprio hires him, the reason Margot Robbie hires him, the reason Toby Maguire hires him is because they know their lifeblood is based on their next performance. Their payday is how their next movie goes. So they put every all the odds on their side of the ledger because movie stars like that get paid a lot of money. So they put Jean-Louis in their corner. This is the reason I want Jean-Louis in your corner because I don't want anybody looking away from you. And if you're physical like they are, if you're physical like I am, people don't have the ability to look away. That's why he's going to be here March 9th, okay? Second um, marching order is sign up for the challenge. Go to boeson.com forward slash challenge. It is in the chat. Go there, sign up for our five-day challenge, our mini camp, if you will. The thing that will prepare us to scale these bi our businesses going forward choosing the right story, scaling your business, okay? And then thirdly, I want you to think about how you're going to get personal with your own story. Remember, the more personal, the more effect. The more personal, the more universality you have with the story, the more contact and connective tissue you have with other people. And if you're feeling a little stuck on this, right, I... I don't blame you. I, I understand this is this this sounds counterintuitive. But when you're counterintuitive, that's always the people that are world class. They don't follow the sheep. They don't follow the norms. They don't follow rules. They create their own way. And that's what we're going to do. So if you're stuck or you feel um, uh, confused, you will not be 
starting March 15th when we begin our challenge together for those five days, that mini camp together. We're going to get you clear. We're going to uh, uh, find that story, your story, and then we're going to scale that sucker. We're going to build your company. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for today. Um, I love this, this, this group because we're the A players. We're loyal to the one thing we should be loyal to, which is our dreams. Okay. So thank you. And uh, we'll see you next week with Jean-Louis.